So we are talking about local stack, uh, how to build and test cloud applications locally using local stack. So uh, Harsh Bhargan will be talking about local stack, how it helps you do cool stuff, and uh, how to utilize local stack integrations, uh, create your lambda functions, and yeah. So let's get started. Awesome. Uh, thanks a lot for uh, introducing me out. So hi, everyone. My name is Harsh. And today, I will be presenting my session on building and testing cloud applications locally using local stack. Uh, so before I jump into my talk, uh, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to the organizing and the volunteer team at ICON uh, for providing this great opportunity and helping me put forward a word about local stack before a general audience. So, so just, just a, a little, little bit about me, uh, I'm currently working as an engineer at Locustack, and I previously worked at HackerRank and Quonsite uh, as software developer intern. Uh, I've also previously been a, a Google Summer of Code student at Metacall, and I just in general like to talk about web engineering, DevOps, cloud native, uh, and some more stuff. So let's jump into the agenda for today's talk and see what's present with us. Uh, so the, so the very first thing, thing uh, that, uh, that we have today is we are going to take an introduction to local stack and what exactly local stack is and how it exactly works out. Uh, we will also be introduced to why the local cloud development paradigm uh, exactly matters. And moving forward, we will run some demonstrations in local stack so that we can demonstrate some basic AWS services like S3 and SQS. And you can follow the local stack documentation to just get onboarded to more and more services pretty much locally without paying anything. Uh, next, we will check out some of the uh, demonstration use cases and integrations uh, that we can make use of uh, while getting started with local stack. And finally, we will conclude our talk with getting an understanding of the AWS server framework, aka ASF, uh, which we basically use to keep track of all of the AWS API changes and some advanced use cases of local stack so that we can start building reproducible cloud and machine learning applications. So if you have any questions or concerns, uh, you can use the Discord server to put them out, or maybe there is also the YouTube live that is going on. And I would be more than happy to answer all of the questions as they come up. So yeah, let's move ahead for this and let's get started with an introduction to local stack. So now with the rise of uh, cloud and serverless application development, uh, engineers have been running into a very tedious problem. And this problem is around local cloud development. Now there are various public cloud service providers in the market, like there is Amazon Web Services, there is GCP, there is Azure, who are trying to build various APIs, various services so that they can make our lives easy. Like for example, if I take AWS in particular, and you're trying to build out an architecture or a solution for your software service, there are endless amount of possibilities that you can start adopting. If you want to deploy an application to a server, you can start using EC2. If you want to uh, use something like serverless code, you can start using lambdas. Uh, if you want to send notifications, you can start using SNS and more of that. But let's be true to ourselves. Most of the times when we, we are using these cloud services, the whole development process is very slow. It is very tedious and it is very costly simply because all of these services are tied to a specific cloud service provider. So since we have a lack of option to emulate these cloud services and they are mostly bound to a particular cloud provider, we simply cannot seem to do much. So this whole end situation basically limits the options available to the engineers who have to start relying upon mock tools or basically testing tools so that they can emulate a local cloud infrastructure which they can pretty much run locally or they can start using this in their continuous integration pipelines and more of that. So this is where local stack comes in. And now the first question you might be asking to yourself is, what is local stack uh, after all? So local stack is a cloud service emulator that basically runs in a single container on your local machine uh, and also in your continuous integration environment so that you can start running your cloud and serverless applications entirely locally. And when I say it's entirely local, it also means completely offline, which also means that you don't have to connect local stack to any sort of a Amazon Web Services account, which, wouldn't, which won't exactly cost you anything. So local stack on a very bare bone level is, is a very great tool for experimenting with various AWS features. Like as you can see, we have compute features like Lambda, ECS, EKS. We have databases like DynamoDB, RDS, Redshift. We have messaging services like SQS, Kinesis, and more of that. 
But on a more broader level, you can also start using local stack for your local cloud development and testing. Now, these testing can also include unit testing, smoke testing, end to end integration testing, and more of that. So, with local stack, all your cloud resources that your application depends upon is now available locally. And it basically allows you to run automated tests of your application inside uh, an emulated environment without the need for any sort of a costly AWS developer account or basically a sandbox account, which most of the companies or most of the users are trying to use today. And it solves a lot of problems for us. Like it solves the problem for having multiple different accounts, multiple different configurations for testing and uh, deployment. It also solves the problem of slow re redeployment. Like if something goes wrong, you have to redeploy the entire thing, which might take some extra time. And it might also solve the problem of transient errors that might just occur because of remote connections. For the end users, it basically means that they can use most of the AWS services pretty much locally. You can just simply go from creating uh, S3 buckets on your local machine to spinning EC2 instances, deploying an entire application by an infrastructure as a code framework like CDK or Terraform, and much more than that. Everything is self-contained inside a Docker container, and we basically provide our users a single standalone command line interface. Uh, along with the various wrapper scripts like uh, TF local or AWS local, so that they can start making the best use of the local stack ecosystem. So this is how the bird's eye view of local stack looks like. Uh, we generally rec recommend folks to start using local stack on their local developer machines and continuous integration, because this is where local stack finds the best use case. You test your application out locally, you develop upon it, you debug your application, you push your application uh, commits over to a continuous integration environment, and even that you that would use local stack for testing everything out before you actually push everything inside to the production, which is where the application will be accessed by your users. And this is exactly where you can start using your AWS APIs, uh, the real ones for which you have to pay something. So local stack is not giving uh, us a cheap local alternative to AWS, rather it enforces us those engineers who are developing up on cloud, specifically AWS. So now you don't have to pay AWS a lot. Everything is local. Everything is epiformable. So you just spin up thing. You, you just spin up local stack. You pick up on a particular service. You start testing it out. And once you are done, you can just spin down local stack and everything is gone. So this is how local stack is basically revolutionizing uh, local AWS development and testing out there. But now one of the question that you might ask yourself is, why exactly local? Uh, why do we need to do cloud development locally and what purpose does it exactly serve? So the entire purpose of a project like local stack is to basically drive local cloud development and collaboration so that the engineers can be pulled out of the inefficient development and testing loop. So right now, if you are trying to develop an AWS application yourself, like let us say you are writing some Lambda functions out there, Every time you write a Lambda function, uh, you might have to zip your code, or you might have to upload your code on the AWS console. You have to test it out there. You have to make sure that every error has been figured out so that if you're putting out your application in, in the production, nothing goes wrong. Now, this whole process is a lot tedious. There is a lack of reproducibility because you cannot have a control over it. So yeah, I was just mentioning that uh, with local stack, everything is pretty much local. So you have a very tight control over your particular environment. Uh, you can deploy this with uh, very much like in a speedy manner because unlike AWS, local stack is just mocking up basic AWS services. It is not providing you the scale or it is not providing you the distribution that AWS exactly has. So everything is blazing fast. Everything is quite speeded up. And this allows you to do quick redeploys and see if your application is actually erroring out. And with all of this, uh, we basically remove out a lot of restrictions for you because now you're not connected with the cloud, so you cannot just nuke your entire AWS account if something goes wrong. You can just pin down your local stack instance. Uh, you can create like multiple developer accounts within local stack itself so that you can try various things out. And there is a lot of uh, like local stack basically makes debugging easier for you. You can start replicating your bugs locally. And at the end of all of this, uh, the cost factor of local stack is also reduced. So uh, the cost factor of like using AWS is also reduced. So local stack gives you a lot of options and not just local stack, but a lot of different uh, like organizations out there are trying to create local emulation tools so that the cloud development experience is easier, it is faster and it is much more regulated. So with local stack, we try to make sure that this is possible within the AWS ecosystem itself. So now that we have explored all of this, uh, we can start experimenting with local stack and actually check out some of the AWS services that we can particularly use out. 
So in this case, the very first place that I would like to recommend is using the local stack docs. So local stack has a, a very comprehensive documentation that documents most of the services that we have emulated, most of the integrations that we have available, and how you can start using local stack within the continuous integration providers itself. Uh, so if you want to particularly use AWS services itself, you can just navigate to local AWS services and you can check out the various services that we have implemented right here. Uh, local stack has a support of like almost 80 plus uh, like AWS services out there. And perhaps the best place to actually check most of them out is going to understanding local stack and checking out the local stack coverage. So we actually do parity testing with the real AWS cloud so that we can actually test and check uh, which of the services that we have implemented and which of the APIs that we have implemented actually match with the exact AWS behavior. behavior. This is what we call as parity testing within local stack itself. And most of the uh, testing code can actually be visible on our uh, open source project itself. So you can just go to local stack and you can check out our entire code base, which is written using Python. And we have some external dependencies and libraries which are packaged inside a Docker container out there. So just to get started with local stack, uh, the best thing that you can particularly do is to start using the local stack CLI. So you can install local stack CLI by using the Python's uh, package manager, the pip. And within pip itself, uh, you can like start pulling out the local stack Docker image. And uh, you, you will have a standalone CLI that will allow you to control your local stack instance. You can start your local stack instance. You can stop your local stack instance and do much more than that uh, as we will further explore in this session. So if you're looking at AWS services, perhaps the base, most basic service that we can look at is S3. Uh, S3 is basically the object storage service that AWS provides. And you can also interact with S3 in local stack using AWS local. So as I mentioned before, local stack has invested significantly in developing out an ecosystem where you can use some of the most popular tools and services out there pretty much locally. So if you have used AWS before, you might know that there is an AWS CLI command. So like you can just go to like your terminal, you can just type AWS. And this is the official command line interface uh, that AWS provides. Since we want our users to use the same interface for interacting with the services, we also provide a similar command line interface. But over here, uh, it's pretty much uh, emulated locally. So this is the AWS local command, which is like a thin wrapper over the AWS command line interface that you can exactly start using out. So I can just go over here. I can type the same thing, AWS local, and you can see it behaves exactly the same uh, as the AWS CLI itself. The only difference over here is that whatever commands we are writing uh, with AWS local, uh, it is basically being sent to the local stack instance rather than the actual AWS itself. So let's check out a few uh, demonstrations right here. So I can just start my local stack instance by local stack start dash D. It will uh, start my local stack instance in a detached mode. And you can see that the local stack ins instance basically fires up and our container is basically started and it has been configured. So I have a few uh, commands that I would like to showcase here. Uh, and these are like very basic commands that you can use to interact with services like S3 and SQS. So what we are basically gonna do is we are just going to like create an S3 bucket, create an SQ SQS queue, put up a message on queue like by using the send message command. And we're just going to receive that message back again so that everything seems to be working fine. So let's go over here and I can just copy paste some of these commands. Uh, so what we are basically doing is like we are creating a bucket which is called test. Uh, we are storing out some content inside a temporary hello world file. And then we are just copying out this file to the S3 bucket that we have right over here. And once we uh, check what is present inside our bucket, we can exactly see that there is a hello world file that we have created before. Now, this is exactly inside local stack itself. And the best thing that, like the best way that you can actually validate this is by going to localhost 4566. Like this is where local stack basically starts up your mock AWS services. And you can actually go to a health endpoint to see what are all the services that has been implemented here. If I have to do this in a more uh, beautiful way, I can just say, and I can see that these are all the AWS services that is available inside local stack. So yeah, this is pretty much like how you can get started with local stack itself. And uh, since uh, like everything that you can like get started with local stack is present in its CLI, we are not exactly emulating an entire AWS console, which might be troublesome for a lot of users. 
but we believe that most of the folks might be able to find their way by using the CLI itself. So in a similar fashion, you can also create an SQS queue uh, just to send your messages to the queue and retrieving it. Uh, you can just send your message right here to the SQS queue itself. And in a similar manner, you can also receive those messages within the queue itself. So yeah, that's pretty much how local stack works out. And if your experimentation, if your development and testing has been done, you can just say like local stack stop. And that will just stop your entire local stack instance. And now if you try to run those very same commands right again, uh, it won't exactly work out because local stack has been stopped. So they cannot exactly connect to the local host 4566 uh, endpoint. Uh, so apart from this, uh, local stack is also quite configurable, uh, and you can particularly check that out inside our configuration docs. And these configuration basically amounts to uh, environmental variables. Uh, so you can pass a lot of these environment variables to the local stack, and you can configure uh, it for whatever services that you are particularly using out. Like going ahead in this session, uh, you might be using this one particular flag that uh, is present right here, which is Lambda Remote Docker. And this is how you can alter how local stack exactly works out. And you can also try to configure local stack in a way that you exactly want to make it work. So local stack is very configurable and there are like various uh, environmental variables that you can particularly start using out. And this is how we provide flexibility to our, our users to basically start using local stack in a much better manner. So yeah, if I just jump back to the slides. And apart from this, we also have a growing ecosystem of integrations. So local stack is not just available by the official AWS CLI. We also have a lot of different integrations out there, which a lot of users particularly seem to use and like. So some of these integrations are particularly limited to the uh, continuous integration providers like Circle CI, GitHub Actions, and GitLab. So if you are developing an AWS application out there and you just want to put it forward uh, in front of the world, so you obviously have to pass through a continuous integration pipeline to make sure that everything works fine, all the test suite is passing, and this is where local stack can basically help you out. Apart from this, we also have got uh, ISC tools like Terraform, Pulumi, CDK, and more. We also have like programming language SDKs like Spring, Python, uh, JUnit, local development tools like Docker Compose, AWS CLI, and finally development frameworks like Serverless, Copilot, AWS SAM, and more of that. So if you're exploring some of these integrations, you can jump to the uh, integrations page that we have right here, and you can just check out on how you can individually start using all of these integrations available to you. So now that we have gone this far and we have an understanding of how lo what local stack is and how it exactly works out, we can start using some of these local stack integrations and some of these services within local stack itself. So, the very first thing that we have available out here is Terraform. So a lot of the folks who are familiar, who are not familiar with what Terraform is, then it's basically an infrastructure as a code framework. And it nicely fits in with local stack, which I'm going to demonstrate right now. What Terraform basically does is like, it allows you to write your entire infrastructure in a declarative manner. And Terraform basically creates a plan which then applies to all of the resources. So no longer you have to go to the AWS console or any other cloud providers console to create all your infrastructure manually. You can just write the entire infrastructure as a, like, as a file itself and you can just use Terraform to basically apply it so that all of the services are spinned up and you can get started with deploying your application out. So in a similar manner, uh, local stack also allows you to uh, use Terraform, but not to deploy this on the actual AWS infrastructure, but to deploy everything inside the local AWS infrastructure that local stack provides. So let's jump to our sample and see what we have right here. So we have uh, an example of Terraform demo. So I can just see the inside that. And as you can see, we have a main.tf file. It, it has been written in HCL, which is the language that Terraform uses to define all of the infrastructure right here. And you might be able to notice that, uh, like we have basically defined an AWS Lambda function. Uh, we have a Lambda function URL. We have a function URL right here that basically creates our function URL config for us. Um, so what we're basically doing is we have a Lambda function right here. And I guess for, for a lot of folks who are already familiar with how serverless functions work, uh, we have a very simple Lambda handler function right here. It has a body which says like, hello from PyCon South Africa. We have a status code and we are just passing all of this inside a single JSON response. And 
what we're exactly doing is like we will basically zip this entire lambda function code right here inside of function.zip file. And we're going to use this main.tf file, basically the Terraform configuration that we have, to create a function URL config for uh, our Lambda function. So it will be accessible via an HTTP URL. So if you're just sending out a GET request to that URL, you can get that JSON response back from the particular URL that we're hitting. So it's an interesting use case. And uh, let's check out on how we can actually implement it out. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'll start local stack instance once again. Uh, Everything is IP formal, so all of the AWS S3 buckets or the SQSQ that I created out in the previous demo will not exactly work out. And we have an acute solution for that, which I'm going to discuss later. Uh, one more thing that's particularly interesting here is the provider.tf. So this provider.tf basically mentions the AWS provider that we are using, and it also mentions the region, the access key, the secret key, and the endpoints that we want the services for. And this is exactly how we are altering how Terraform works. So that instead of sending out the request to the AWS cloud itself, all of the request is basically mocked and sent to the local stack instance that we have just spent right now. So we are just going to do the same. Uh, the first thing that we are going to do is like, we will just zip this entire Lambda function inside a function.zip file, which is visible right here. And once we do that, we can say Terraform in it because it will initialize the entire Terraform backend. It will install all the provider plugins, uh, which will allow us to uh, deploy our Lambda function onto the uh, lower stack itself. If you don't wish to do that, you can also start using, uh, like you can directly upload this zip by using the AWS Lambda uh, command. Uh, but I just, it's like doing this with Terraform is much more faster and easier in this case. So as you can see, like Terraform has been successfully initialized. So you can also do a Terraform plan to exactly see what resources will be created on your infrastructure. And just remember that everything is inside local stack itself. Like none of this infrastructure is being applied to AWS, which might cost you some money. So as you can see, the infrastructure is ready. So I can just say like Terraform apply. You can also add an auto approve flag right here if you don't want to enter this value locally. So you have to like mention that, yes, I want to deploy this infrastructure. And as soon as I say this, uh, local stack will start creating your infrastructure on uh, like lambdas, and it is blazing fast because everything is happening pretty much locally. If you try to do the same thing upon uh, the actual AWS, it might take a minute or two to deploy all of these resources over there. And as you can see, the apply is complete, and you can see that there is a function URL right here that is basically the uh, function URL config that we have created with this Terraform file right here. So I can actually copy this entire thing up here. I can just go here, I can just see. Yeah, just send up a GET request to this. And it's, it's very simple. Uh, the response that we're getting, it's like, hello from Python City. Now, eventually it has like more complex use cases. You can deploy your entire application with a lot of different moving parts, services, and components around here. It's just a simplistic introduction to what local stack can exactly do for you. And as soon as you see local stack stop, uh, everything is pinned down, so no. So now your Lambda function uh, URL config is no longer available because it cannot connect to the port 4566 where local stack was exactly running. So that's pretty much how uh, this works out. Uh, and that's like a very simplistic uh, interface that we have right here. If you don't want to use the actual Terraform CLI and maybe you don't want to have a separate provider.tf file, we also provide a TF local script. Uh, and it's, again, it's just a wrapper over the Terraform uh, command line that we have right here. So this is the Terraform local uh, wrapper script that allows you to run Terraform against local stack. And again, you can just install it by pip, like AWS CLI local or local stack itself, and you can start uh, to use it. So it will create a separate file that will have the mocked service endpoints. And once your Terraform apply is over, it will just delete that particular file so that you can continue on with your development. Cool, uh, so jumping ahead, we also have another significant demo. And it's about Lambda hot reloading. So it is a particular, it is a very great use case because with local stack, you can also do Lambda hot reloading. Now, if you're traditionally deploying Lambdas upon AWS, you either do that by using the editor that AWS console provides you, or you just zip your code along with all of the dependencies that it has and just uh, deploy it upon the AWS console or the AWS CLI. Now, this is a tedious process. And if your code is running into some sort of an error or some sort of an issue, it might take you another iteration to fix all of those issues out, uh, make sure that everything is just working fine before you actually deploy that on AWS. 
Now with local stack, you can just mount your source code directly uh, into a Lambda and you can directly run it. And this is where we get this entire term called as Lambda hot reloading. And this is a very great way to test your code on each and every change without having to redeploy everything up on AWS or ever running your deployment scripts again. So we can effectively try this out and see how this exactly works. So again, just closing this out and jumping back to Lambda hot reloading. We have again, a very simplistic uh, Lambda function right here. So it has got uh, an actions right here, which basically defines a few of these uh, mathematical operations that we wanna do inside Lambda functions. And then we have a separate Lambda handler function over here that basically gets uh, whatever the user wants inside an event. Uh, it calculates the response and it basically sends out the response as a JSON uh, stuff. So again, I can try this out. I can just go to Lambda hot reloading demo. And I can just pretty much mount this entire source code directly inside local stack itself. But before doing that, we have to configure uh, an environmental variable, which is Lambda remote Docker. So just to understand that, we can jump back uh, to whatever configurations we had before. So we have this configuration page right here, and we also have like a Lambda service over here. So Lambda remote Docker basically determines whether the Lambda code is actually being copied or mounted into the containers. So by default, this environmental variable has been set to true, which exactly means that you have to deploy your Lambdas by copying your zip file, which is potentially slow. If you want to do that by directly mounting uh, your source code as a volume, you can just set this to false or zero and it will just work fine. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm just going to specify this environmental variable with zero so that I can exactly mount my source code directly inside uh, local stack itself. So once this is done, uh, I can just create a, a simplistic Lambda function. I have specified my Lambda function name to be my cool local function. Again, you can just change this to be whatever suits you out. Uh, I have specified a special variable right here, which is S3 bucket to specify that I'm trying to deploy this by my local machine. And I'm specifying an S3 key, which just holds the path to where exactly my Lambda hot reloading demo code has been stored. We also specify the handler, which is Lambda function, which is the file name, Lambda handler, which is the function name, the, the runtime for Apologies, Apologies for the technical difficulties. Uh, I, was I was just, just mentioning, mentioning that, that right, right here, here we have just configured, configured our uh, Lambda remote Docker variable to zero, which just creates like false. And we have started our local stack instance and we have created a Lambda function like named as my cool local function. And we have specified an S3 bucket to be local and S3 key to the uh, exact path where our source code is exactly living out. We have also specified the handler part, the runtime and the role right here. And we have just copy pasted this command out and we can see that the function name, the function ARN, the runtime, the role, the handler, all of this is exactly visible. So now that we have this available right here, we can also try to invoke this Lambda function just to see if everything is working out well. So I can just send it uh, like a payload, which is like uh, the action should be the square and the number should be three. And it should store all of the information out there inside output.txt. And as you can see, the result is nine. So this is exactly what we were expecting out. Uh, if you are using any other operation, like let's say increment or decrement or square root, it would have sent out a different uh, response altogether. But now the real interesting part to see over here is to check like what if we change our Lambda function and we try to invoke the same Lambda code once again. So what I'm gonna do here is like, I'll just change this response. I'll make it math underscore result so that once we get our result right now, and if this Lambda hot reloading exactly works in a way that I'm expecting it to do, I can exactly see that there should be a math underscore result uh, along with the actual result that should be present in a JSON response. So I can do the same thing again. I can just load the same command that I have ran before. I'll just use the same payload, which is action should, should be square and number should be three. And as soon as I run this out, it might take some time, the status code is 200. And if I just go to output.txt, I can see that my math underscore result is nine. So that exactly means that we didn't have to redeploy our Lambda code once again. We didn't have to like spin down the local stack instance and spin it one, up once again. We just mounted all our source code inside the Docker container. And we just ran the same code once again and local stack was able to hot reload the entire thing uh, upon itself. So this is exactly how uh, local stacks hot reloading works. And it's a very effective technique to get started with developing your serverless functions, debugging upon it, uh, making it bug free, before you actually put it on the out on the production for everyone else to use this out. We have some like really extensive docs about Lambda hot reloading over there. 
So you can just go to local stack tools and you can just go to Lambda tools and you can find on how you can get started with hot reloading your GVM, Python lambdas, Node.js lambdas, and almost all of the runtimes that AWS supports currently. We also have another option called as remote debugging. And this is like yet another way in which you can debug your Lambda functions using VS Code itself and using standard Python debuggers by setting up breakpoints and by running it out. So we provide a lot of developer experience tools to make sure that your Lambda development experience is much smoother at the end of the day. So now that we have lost some time uh, into the technical glitches, we can move ahead and start with some of the meaty parts around how exactly we make all of this possible. So now that we've explored uh, how local stack works for a variety of cloud development use cases, it's also important to understand on how we make this possible. So one of our main pain points while developing local stack was maintaining parity with AWS. So let's be honest to ourselves, AWS is a really complex ecosystem. It has got hundreds of different services all together and each services has a lot of API endpoints that we have to basically emulate and mock. So parity for local stack, uh, so we have to maintain this parity and parity for local stack basically means that if you're making an AWS API call to the local stacks, local cloud emulator, it should behave in the exactly the same manner that AWS would. So if you're deploying out a Lambda function code over local stack, it should work out in the same manner that it would work out on AWS itself. And now keeping parity with AWS was very, very essential for helping us build out a reliable cloud emulator that provides uh, a great experience for the cloud application developers. So now we have introduced some new mechanisms so that we can scale the endeavor and ensure that the parity of local stack with the AWS increases continuously over the time while we keep our service implementations up to date. And this is where we built AWS Server Framework, aka ASF, to just do the same thing for us. So what exactly is ASF after all? Now, distributed uh, cloud systems like AWS have a lot of complexity. And a lot of people are also skeptical about uh, like how local stack can behave in the same way that AWS does when it is changing dynamically over the time. So since local stack runs on a local machine, uh, we have to basically not deal with any of the distributed systems or deal with like any of the inherent complexities that AWS undergoes to make sure that your services are scalable at the end of the day. We can just make some very simplistic assumptions about the implementation of services and we can just make do with that. And this is very helpful for us because emulating services like Lambda or SNS or SQS uh, that are like normally complex distributed systems makes like the entire job for us is like a lot easier right now. And for a lot of other services that provide us the CRUD functionalities like create, read, update, delete, uh, like this functionality itself is more than sufficient for us for most of the use cases. Now, AWS has a very well-defined API and protocol specification. And this is exactly what we did to, this is exactly what we used to build out the AWS server framework as well. So ASF basically supports server-side stubs for all of these services and all of these operations. But now you might ask on, how do we do that exactly? So this is, in, this is the part where it gets interesting because AWS has built something that we call as Smithy. So Smithy is an internal uh, tool that's used at AWS. And it is basically used to internally define their APIs in a declarative manner. And they basically use these specifications so that they can generate some client SDKs and client documentation as well. Now, all of these specifications are available. Okay. So all of these specifications are available among other repositories inside a repository that is called as Botocore. So Botocore is basically, yeah, I spelled it wrong, but yeah. So Botocore is basically containing all of the internals of the AWS Python SDK. And it basically allows the ASF to interpret and operate on its own service specification. Now, all of the service requests are basically routed to the respective server side implementations. And this is how we basically generate the entire AWS protocol in a generalized manner. So apart from this, uh, is ASF is basically a remote procedure call system. And ASF is basically our server side implementations of that system itself. And it has a lot of different components that you can just check it out on our developer guide uh, documentation. So this is exactly how the entire AWS service anatomy looks like uh, for the end user. And once we develop our service, we basically expose it as a service plugin so that our code loading framework can basically pick this up. And this is where we arrive at the open source project that we developed, which is called as Plux. So using Plux, we basically load our service providers, we load our hooks, we load our extensions, 
And Flux overall is built upon a very high level plugin mechanism around Python entry point mechanism itself. It basically allows you to load all of these plugins from your entry point at runtime itself so that your application can basically discover these entry points during the build time itself. And it basically solves a very important problem for the end Python developers because they don't have to like declare their entry points statically inside their setup.py or pyproject.toml or any of the other configuration that they are using out. Uh, apart from this, uh, local stack also has got some like advanced use cases, which unfortunately, like with the time constraints, I won't be able to like go through. But you can just check it out on our documentation about CloudBots. And CloudBots is basically what enables you to start developing uh, persistable local stack instances, and you can just share it out with your own team members so that they can start collaborating with you. They can dework cloud applications together, and they can solve a lot of problems together itself. So using CloudBots, you can basically operate your cloud objects like inside local stack instances, just like how Git works. So most of the commands like commit, inject, push, pull, these might seem very, very similar to how Git exactly works. And this is how we basically herald like cloud collaboration within local stack itself. So since we don't have the time for this, we would miss out on the demonstration part, but you can easily go to the local stack docs and you can check out one of the demonstrations and one of the uh, guides over there so that you can get started with using cloud pods right there. So you can create your applications using AWS. Uh, you can test it locally using local stack. You can just package this and you can like set it out as a cloud pod for your team member and they can help you just debug this out and collaborate together on the same cloud pod itself. So I guess that basically concludes our session for the day. So thanks a lot for attending this and apologies for all of the technical glitches and the delays that happened. And if there are any questions that are coming up, I would be more than happy to take them over here or maybe offline. So thank you all. Yeah, I, I can hear you now. So if it is a GCP that uh, like uh, the asker mentioned, like uh, we do have plans for that in the coming months, but there is like no exact uh, implementation within local stack right now that provides service that provides uh, like an emulation of that. So GCP do have like possess some local emulators that would be worth checking out and it can like simplify the development and testing to some extent. All right, uh, if we have time for one more. Awesome, I guess we don't have any more questions. So, yep. I can hear you now. Yeah. Uh, hi. Um, yeah. Thanks for the very cool talk. Looks like like some cool tech to check out. Um, something that I often get tripped up around is IAM and uh, AWS permissions. Uh, does local stack fully implement the all of IAM semantics so that we can use this to test that we've given accounts the right permissions and stuff? Yes. Uh, local stack do support all of the IAM implementations that you might uh, you might want to look at. And uh, like we have also uh, implemented like multi-account setup as well, so uh, for all of the services. So it would be worth checking out. I can just send out the uh, docs link over on the Discord server so that it's uh, easy to like check if your use case has been validated. Cool, awesome. Uh, that's it. And thanks for thanks everyone for the talk. It was great, amazing, and yeah. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.